Okay. Hi. Here I am again for another episode of As the Worms Turn. And as you can tell by the way I'm dressed, it is a little colder out here today than it was the last time I saw you. Um, <laughs> it is March 20, 28th today. And uh, the other day... I do believe it was yesterday or perhaps it was the day before. Uh, we had a day, I mean, look out the window, you would have thought it was winter. Um, we had a serious storm come through, dumped a lot of snow on us, and then that afternoon it cleared off and the sun came out briefly and it was gone. But the temperatures are definitely on the chilly side today. The wind is blowing, my fingers and my toes are quite cold, so this is going to be a quick little video. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly turn the bedding, see how things are going inside. I am going to put some food stock down if it looks like it needs it. I'm going to cover it back up. I will probably try to get some fresh leaves on the top, and then I'm going to show you how I water. And um, we'll talk briefly as I'm working here. Let me find my gloves. Um, we'll talk briefly about how I set the bed up. Um, when you initially set up a bin this size, you're going to fill it about two-thirds full with your original um, bedding. Now this here is my temperature probe that I have stuck down in the middle of the bed that's telling me that the bed is running about 62 degrees. Now I did have a compost fork, not a compost fork, a compost thermometer. My brain is frozen, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking straight. A compost thermometer, I mentioned this before, um, it's got uh, your temperature gauge on one end and then it's got your probe about 18 inches long. I stick it down into the bed. Um, with this I can, I can determine uh, what the temperature is at any depth. I can stick it all the way down until it hits the bottom. I can bring it back up to the middle, I can bring it up to the top, and I can see what the different layers of the bedding are, is reading. Um, according to this, where this probe was stuck, which was right about where the food stock was, it was reading about 72 degrees. So that is really perfect. Those worms are in there um, having a great time with that food stock. And uh, so that's great. Um, anyway, your initial bedding is going to fill the whole bed, and you're going to fill it about two thirds full and you're going to add your worms and you're going to start feeding. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, see that first fork full? I don't know if I can get this up here where you can see that. There's lots of worms in there, right there in that very corner. That's the first fork I've turned. Um, anyway, um, you're going to let the worms work that for probably about three months, depending on what time of year you do it. And then um, you're going to be ready to to um, harvest. And what you do at that time, or what I did anyway, is I sectioned off the bed. And I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections. And I just, I measured them equally down the bed with a measuring tape and I took a, a permanent marker and I marked the um, mark the sections off and labeled them. And a good thing to do before you even put anything in the bed is to locate your um, bottom vents and make a mark on the side of the bed as to where they're at so that when you get in here and you start digging you know where they're at and you can be careful not to go too deep with the fork and catch the fork on that vent and pull it out. Um, I've done it, I, do, I still do it. Um, but what happens then is that you open up a hole at the bottom of the bin, you got to move material to try to find it, and you got to find your vent, and in the meantime you've got material falling down through the bin into the collection um, tray beneath. And so you want to try to do that as little as possible. I mean, it's, you know, obviously, since I've done it a few times and my bins are still surviving, um, it's not 
a huge issue, but that material falls down into the leachate and, you know, I don't know what it does. I've, I haven't looked into the catch trays on these since I've started the bins, so I don't know what they look down, like down there, but eventually I would think that um, you would have start having troubles with your leachate um, draining out through the spigot. Anyway, the reason why I section off uh, the bedding is because once I harvest, what you do when you harvest is you pull all of the fresh material that's on the top layers um, where your worms are feeding and you pull that all the way down to one end of your bed and you just pile it up, okay? Now your castings that you're harvesting are at the bottom layers of the bin. And so what you're doing is you're pulling all the top stuff up the top and then you're going down and you're getting the casting material off the bottom and you've got two sections here at the end. That's the way I've got it laid out. Two sections here at the end that I have finished material. Finished material. See? Um, and you pull all of your castings off the bottom down into that end section. Now, for whatever reason, um, you're, you're going to have worms down in that finished material. I mean, it just, they, they're just there. And there's no way to get them out except to allow for the material to cure and dry. And they will move out. Either they move out or they die, one or the other. And um, so that's what I do. I pull that material down to the end. Um, work my way down the entire bin. Uh, once I get halfway through the bin, then I take the material from over here and I flip-flop it back over and I take the material off the bottom of this end. It's a lot of work, uh, but it's really the only way to work a bin like this. So, 